So something really interesting happened the last time that I zeroed my rifle and then followed up to check speed with my magneto speed. So I started off here by going ahead and doing a few Fowler shots and then I got a good zero. So three shots here. This is gonna be the first group with the magneto speed. Let's go look at it. Here we are. All right, targets I just hung up. So I did some fouling shots over here. That was my very first shot next to. Came over here for a zero and I was aiming at this point here and it was hitting a little right. I don't really like to hit on the right side so I moved it a tenth left. Came up here, shot this one, yeah, whatever, and hit those two. So those are left of aiming at that point there. So then I added the magneto speed and look where we're hitting, high and left. So left, like we are there, but almost an inch high, like exactly like what I was saying. So it looks like I repeated the first thing that I did. Uh, I just did a quick measurement with Ballistic X. So my first zero said uh, to go down 0 0.01 mil, that's the ATZ. So I needed to go down 0 0.01, it's, it's basically on zero. The second zero said I needed to come up 0 0.04. Well then, when I shot that, so if you average those two, if you average that 0, 0 0.01, 0 0.04, it needs to come up uh, about 0 0.025. So still, essentially it's on zero, but 0 0.025 is what we're gonna run with. That first shot, that first group with the magneto speed says I need to come down 0 0.22 mils. So if you add 0 0.025, need to come up, plus needing to come down 0 0.22, it's 0 0.245, so, quarter mil it's a quarter mil difference that I got in that just with adding that magneto speed so all right Reese what's what's the real test here let's get to that now so we've got this magneto speed on the bottom and it's making it go up here's my hypothesis I think that the bullet is passing so close to this flat surface that on the bottom side of that bullet, it is creating a turbulent layer of air underneath it. So it's not hitting it, it's not making it go up, this thing would be destroyed. So I think we're creating a turbulent layer of air through that. Now the other option is laminar layer. Turbulent versus laminar, the laminar layer is going to have a faster flow rate. If you look at flow through of fluids through pipes, you'll see this phenomenon where in the middle of the pipe, fluid's flowing the fastest. That makes sense, there's more drag of the air, right? So same kind of thing. The air is almost dragging as, it's, as the bullet's coming by here, making that air slow, and the air on top is still at normal speed. It's, it's faster. So what does that do to the bullet? Well, if you have faster air on top, it's, it's like an airplane wing. That's the analogy I'm gonna use. If you have faster air on top of an airplane wing, because the airplane wings are curved on top, flat on the bottom, it creates lower pressure and it lifts up. So I think that same thing's happening here with the bullet. I think that we are getting that laminar layer on top, well, more laminar, it's, it's going so fast, it's probably still turbulent, but more laminar, it's creating lift on top of the bullet and uh, raising the point of impact up when we're shooting across this. So, to test this theory, let's start by turning it upside down, see if it does the opposite, right? Should do the opposite, should pull it down. Let's see if that works. Three more shots. So it's actually really hard to see through that because this blocks so much of the view. Uh, it actually kind of really made a dark shadow in there. So it's kind of harder to see, but uh, I think you're going to like this. However, before I go show you guys what's going on here, let's try a couple other spots. If it works going to make the bullet go up, can it also make the bullet go left and right? Let's find out. Let's turn this thing sideways. All right, 
For that last group, I aimed at the right side of the diamond, the big diamond in the middle of that target. On this one, I'm going to aim at the top left diamond. I'm going to aim at the right point of the top left diamond, because I think we're going to make it go right. And our last position here, let's go to the right side of this. And for this one, I'm going to aim at the top right diamond, the left point of it. And I think we're going to make it go left. Very interesting. You guys are gonna like this. So it looks like there was a little bit of vertical movement as well. So uh, that's interesting. We're gonna see how this that plays out when we get down here exactly. Let's take some measurements again with Ballistic X and really put some numbers behind it. Um, some people are gonna really wonder about group size and barrel harmonics and all that sort of stuff. I'm not getting into that discussion here. We're just looking at point of impact. Where does this point of impact go with the magneto speed in different positions? So let's let's take a look. All right, so we had our first zero without the magneto speed, uh, adjusted zero without the magneto speed. After that, we went and shot with the magneto speed under. It was above, remember? After that, shot at the right point, the magneto speed on top, the bullet, the point of impact went about an inch down from there, back from here. So this one was about an, almost an inch high. This one was an inch low. Over here, we put the magneto speed on the left side of it, and it pushed the bullet right, uh, not quite an inch. Over here, we put the magneto speed on the right side, and it pushed the bullet left about an inch again. So, also I mentioned there's some elevation. I was aiming up here, and it came down here, aiming there, and it came down there. So, there was a little bit of an effect, and maybe that's just from being imperfect with it, but maybe there's something else going on too. So, what I'm seeing here is that when the magneto speed is on uh, a particular side, it drives the bullet away from that side. It drives it away from the magneto speed. When the magneto speed was on the bottom, we had about a quarter mil. That's what we started. It was a quarter mil high. When we put the magneto speed on top, it was about 0.35 low. It needed to come up 0.35. When the magneto speed was on the left, it needed to come left about 0.2. When the magneto speed was on the right, it needed to come right about 0.3. So that's some pretty stark differences just by where you have that positioning of the magneto speed. And I, I really do think that this supports the idea that the magneto speed just going across with the bullet going across that flat surface of the magneto speed is driving that bullet to a different point of impact because it's the same weight in the muzzle it's just where we rotated it on the muzzle so pretty interesting